All right, this time we're basically going to put everything together and see if we can't do this. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the zeros of this polynomial. So we're going to look at a couple things. First of all, we'll look at, at the possible rational zeros. So it's going to be the factors of our constants. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus uh, 6 over uh, the factors of our leading coefficient. Now that's going to end up with basically a lot of different things. You're going to have 1, 2, 3, 6, and then you're going to have 1 half, uh, 3 halves, and then you're going to have 1 fourth, uh, four, uh, 3 fourths, and then you, also, you already have that. So I'll go ahead and write those down. I don't know why I didn't at the beginning. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6, uh, plus or minus oh, 1 half. Uh, we already have 2 divided by 2, so plus or minus 3 halves. Um, we already have 3, so plus or minus 1 fourth. Uh, 2 fourths is a half, 3 fourths, plus or minus 3 fourths. And then 6 fourths will simplify to 3 halves, so that's good. Uh, and then now we're going to use the uh, Descartes rule of signs. So the number of possible positive zeros, uh, as you can see, uh, this will be one sign change, two sign changes, three sign changes. So we'll get three or one will be our possibilities. I'm actually going to write down what uh, f of negative x would be. Again, only the ones with odd exponents will change. So when I do this, uh, you should be able to again count your zeros, so the number of possible negative zeros. And of course these are real zeros we're talking about. Uh, this is positive, 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 so it looks like there's one sign change. So that could mean one of two things, either all of our zeros are real, so we'll have uh, three positive and one negative, or we have one positive and one negative and the other two are imaginary. So what we're going to do now is we'll actually look at the graph and see, uh, now that we've narrowed things down, which ones might uh, work out. So as you can see, I've typed that in. Here's the graph. So now we can immediately eliminate the fact that there are three positive and one negative. Because in this graph right here, we only have two zeros that we can see. And all of our zeros would actually fit on the screen because it goes from negative 10 to positive 10. So all of them would fit on there. So next what we're going to do is we'll look at our table and see if we have any. Uh, you should be able to see 1. At the value of 1, you get a nice little integer. Uh, or the integer 1 gives you a value of 0. And our other 0 is probably going to be in between 0 and negative 1 because you can see there's a sign change. So what we'll do is we'll go back and see if we can't uh, come up with that 0. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this over to the other slide. If I can remember how to do it. Copy. All right, so I think we found one to be one of our zeros, so I'll need that. And then uh, I forgot to calculate the other one, so let's go back and see if we can't figure it out. So uh, I'm going to go second, trace, calculate, I'm going to calculate the zero, and I think it's between negative one and zero. Make sure that you type those uh, in left or right form, because if you don't, uh, it's going to say that you did something wrong. So as you can see, we get negative 7 decimal 5. And for us, that should make sense because as you can see, uh, we did have this right here. So a negative 3 fourths will be represented by that fraction. So we know negative 3 fourths. Right now our zeros are 1 and negative 3 fourths. And we're going to try to find the other two. So we'll do a little synthetic division here. Making sure for uh, missing any spots, we'll hold our place value. And we'll bring this down, so 4, 4, 3, 3, 8, 8, 6, 6, and 0. So that worked out well for us. And we'll try it one more time, except this time we'll actually use the negative 3 force. Again, our remainder should be 0 if we've done this correctly. So 4, that'll be a negative 3, so we'll get 0, 0, 8, uh, four going at two times, a negative six, so we get a nice little zero. 
And what that leaves us, anytime you have a fourth degree polynomial and you divide it by two zeros, you're going to end up taking two away from the degree. So it's going to be 4x squared, 0x, and then plus 8. Now this is nice because I only have one variable left. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 8. And then I'll divide by 4. And then I'll take the square root. And it should make a little sense because, like we said in Descartes' rule of signs, that uh, the other two would have to be imaginary. It doesn't cross the x-axis any other times. So your other two zeros are plus or minus i square root of 2. So there's your last example. Thanks.